everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, I will be giving you a two month update on our sweet baby girl, Miss Eliana Grace. So there have been a lot of changes over this past month, month and a half. She's actually two and a half months, so we are a little behind on filming this, but again, there have been so many changes and it's been very, very busy here at home. So we've just been doing lots of new things and we've had a lot of grandparents and visitors and so it's just been a fun time. But I'm gonna go ahead and give you an update so that you guys know how she's doing and I hope you guys enjoy. So first of all, if you are new, my name is Jess, and like I said, this is Eliana. She is our first baby, and she is our rainbow baby girl, and she was born back in March. On this channel, I documented my pregnancy, and I do a lot of different lifestyle, cleaning, and parenthood videos, so if you are interested in those types of videos, then we would love to have you as part of the Nook fam. All you have to do is click that red subscribe button, as well as the notification bell, so that you don't miss when we upload a new video. So you will be seeing a lot more of this sweet girl here because she is my whole life now. Of course we do not forget about our pets, but this little one right here definitely keeps us busy. So this little one has grown quite a bit since you guys saw her in her last update. She is now 23 inches long and weighs 11 pounds 10 ounces. At least that's what she weighed at her last doctor's appointment at her two month visit. So she's probably over 12 pounds now, which is so so exciting but also oh my gosh it's blowing my mind how fast she's growing so she's grown three inches and she's gained about four pounds since she was born so my little one is getting so big I just can't believe it so I'm gonna take Eliana to daddy so that she can have some daddy daughter bonding time and chief is gonna join me here of course <laughs> he's my buddy so like I said, there have been a lot of changes over this past month. We have had a lot of improvements in certain areas, but there also have been some challenges. So I'm gonna dive into all of those today. We have been following a pretty flexible schedule. I guess I shouldn't say schedule, but more of a routine with her. And that has seemed to make a huge, huge difference just across the board. So we recently listened to the book, The Baby Whisperer. So in that book, she talks about that parents might want to try using the easy method which is E-A-S-Y, easy. E stands for eat. A is for, I can't remember if it's activity or awake time, something like that. S is for sleep and Y is for you, which is you time. So we have been following that schedule. So basically when we wake up in the morning, after I change her diaper, I feed her so she eats. Then I keep her awake for a little bit of time and that's where we play or do tummy time or just make facial expressions and giggle and things like that. And then she sleeps, so I put her down for her first nap. During that nap time is where I am able to do stuff for myself, so that is where the why comes in. The biggest challenge for us right now is the fact that she is a cat napper. So she only sleeps between, I would say, 20 to 45 minutes on average, and it's really hard for me to get stuff done during that time just because she doesn't nap long enough. Now I do put her in her swing or lay her down or just have her try to self-soothe for a while and she does really well with that. It's not like she's fussy in between naps. She actually is a very, very happy or content baby. She just will kind of lay there and coo and she'll put her hands in her mouth and just try to self-soothe. So I can still get some things done around the house because she's not crying really. She just is laying there looking around and just taking everything in. So that does make it a lot easier. However, I also know that she needs to rest. She needs her sleep because what we have found is that the more that she is able to rest and nap well during the day, the better she sleeps at night, which is huge. So we are still working on her naps, but I wanted to share the easy schedule with you because it has really worked out well for us so far. So throughout this video, I'm just kind of gonna be going along that schedule and talking about how things have changed. I'm gonna start with E, so eating, how her eating habits are nowadays at two months old, and then we'll just kind of move on from so there. So breastfeeding is going really, really well. We have made huge improvements in that area. At the beginning, we did struggle a little bit, and then it kind of led into where I had to really guide her, and she was starting to gain some independence there when she was trying to latch, but now breastfeeding is completely baby-led, which is so 
oh, it's just such a relief because I feel like I can just let her latch on, do what she needs to do. She has learned how to latch on effectively and quickly without it causing me any pain whatsoever. And the only time that it ever causes me a teeny tiny little bit of pain is when she starts to get a little drowsy and she'll pull off a little bit so that it's more at the tip. And that is a little painful, but otherwise she is on it. She knows exactly what she needs to do to feed. Now, I will say that as she is growing, she is starting to take more milk. So she's eating a lot more during one sitting and it's been starting to seem like my milk supply is actually going down. So I'm not sure if it really is or if she's just eating more and requiring more milk or if my milk is changing and maybe becoming thicker, or I'm not really sure what's going on, but it does seem like I don't have as much milk as I did in the beginning. At the beginning, especially when my milk was coming in, I had so, so much milk. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to start donating this eventually because I had so much milk. Well, now all of a sudden it has plummeted. I mean, I still have enough to feed her, but I definitely don't have as much as what I used to have. And it actually started making me feel really down on myself and like I wasn't able to feed my baby. And I really got pretty emotional about it over this past week because I felt like my body wasn't doing its job to produce enough milk for her. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but for now I have started working on increasing my milk supply. So I've been eating lactation cookies, I've been eating oats, I've been making sure to stay hydrated, all of the things that they recommend out there to help boost your milk supply, I am trying to do. The nursing supplements, I hadn't been very good about taking those over these past few weeks, so I am trying to be better about making sure that I'm taking all three of those a day because that is a complete postnatal vitamin as well and it supports my breast milk quality. I just was kind of getting lazy with some things and I think that that might have something to do with it, but I'm really trying to focus on keeping my milk supply up now, especially now that she's getting bigger and I believe is requiring more milk per feeding. So I will definitely let you guys know how that goes. That is why I haven't filmed my breastfeeding routine quite yet because I wasn't really sure how things were going and I want to give my best tips and tricks to you guys just based off of my experience. So that video is still coming, but I want to regulate my supply first and then I will film that video. So something new this month is we introduced the bottle to Eliana. So I was having a really hard time at the beginning with the thought of someone else feeding my baby. I know that sounds so, so silly, but I really wanted just to exclusively breastfeed for as long as I possibly could. And I don't know, I knew that we needed to introduce the bottle to her so that I could have some freedom as well. I am a very independent person and I knew that I would want to be able to go out and and run a couple of errands or go get my nails done, maybe go on a date with Chaz and leave Eliana with the grandparents, things like that. So I knew that I needed to have her used to drinking from a bottle in case we needed to leave the house for whatever reason. So we did decide to introduce the bottle and it has gone so well. She has taken every style or every type of bottle that we have given to her. So in that respect, we are very lucky that she isn't really picky. But for us personally, we have found that we enjoy Enjoy using the Como Tomo bottles best just because it really resembles a breast very closely and they are very easy for us to hold. Another reason we wanted to introduce the bottle is because I wanted Chaz to have that same bonding experience that I get to have with her all the time. So it has been really nice for him to be able to feed her and bond with her in that way because honestly, moms do so much and there is so much bonding between mother and baby, especially when they are newborns. So it's nice to be be able to involve dad in whatever we can and I think feeding her is definitely one of the ways that he feels close to her and feels like he can bond with her so that has been wonderful. Now when I say bottle feeding, she is still drinking breast milk. So I pump and then freeze my breast milk and that is what we defrost and warm for her to drink from a bottle. So she is still getting my breast milk and she's not fed the bottle all day long. I still am breastfeeding, but we do feed her bottles at nighttime. Now I do wanna throw a disclaimer out there. It does not matter how you choose to feed your baby. As long as your baby is getting fed, then that is all that matters. And you can still bond with your baby, whether you are breastfeeding 
feeding or bottle feeding with breast milk or feeding them formula, it doesn't matter. Your baby is still getting what he or she needs and that is the most important thing. So when I am breastfeeding, of course, I have no idea how much she is drinking, but it seems like her feedings are a lot shorter than they used to be. Sometimes she would feed up to 45 minutes on one breast and that seemed like a really long time for me, but she was also filling up. She was very satisfied after that. Now it seems like it's 10 to 15 minutes and she's done and she seems very satisfied still. So I'm not sure if she's just drinking a lot more and more quickly because now she knows what to do and she's used to that. But when we give her a bottle as part of her nighttime routine, she typically drinks between four and five ounces. She hasn't really had too many five ounce bottles. When we do give those ones to her, she doesn't usually finish them completely, but she does get close. So I would say between four and five ounces is what she is drinking right before bed. I definitely don't think that she gets that much from the breast. That's why we choose to give her a bottle before bed because giving her that extra milk in that bottle really helps her sleep at night. And by the way, if you guys haven't seen our newborn bedtime routine that shows how we get her ready for bed and what we do to help her sleep through the night, then definitely check that video out as well because she has been sleeping through the night since she was nine weeks old. One of the things that has helped with that is giving her that four to five ounce bottle of breast milk before we lay her down. So definitely check that out. Like I said, I will have it linked below. And then the last thing in regards to breastfeeding is that we are still giving her her vitamin D drops. I used to put the drop right on my breast before she would eat once a day, but I was finding that that wasn't really working because I wasn't being very consistent with it. And I didn't really have a routine as to when I did that throughout the day. So that method wasn't working for me. Now I have incorporated it into her bedtime routine as well. And I just put one little drop on my finger, of course with clean hands, and then I put it on her tongue and she just is good for the day. So moving on to A, I'm gonna talk about what she does when she's awake or during activity time. So first of all, physically, she has gotten so much stronger. She can hold her head up so much better now, not just during tummy time, but just all the time. We like to sit her on our lap and she likes to look around and she's able to hold her head up. Her little neck is getting so strong. She has also recently discovered her hands and feet. She loves to put her hands in her mouth so much so that she doesn't even really take a pacifier much anymore. She actually prefers her hands. So I don't know if that is normal or if I should let her do that or if I should encourage the pacifier. I'm not really sure. She's not sucking her thumb. She's just kind of putting her whole fist kind of up in her mouth area and sucking on the side of her hand. So again, I'm not sure what I should be doing with that. If you have experience with this with your little ones, let me know what you decided to do and what you recommend because I'm not sure if I should just let her suck on her hands or if I should continue to encourage the use of a pacifier instead. But she does this all the time. And as far as her feet, she hasn't touched her feet at all with her hands, but whenever she is laying on our lap and looking up at us, her little feet are usually on our chest and she'll stare at her toes with a furrowed brow like she's concentrating really hard. By the way, speaking of her little feet, her toes are my favorite thing ever. They are so cute. I just love them so much. I kiss on her toes all the time. I know that that probably sounds really strange if you're not a mama, but if you are a mama, you know exactly what I'm talking about, I'm sure. I I just cannot get enough of her tiny baby feet. They are the sweetest things I have ever seen. So not only has she discovered her hands and feet, but she is also starting to move around so much more. So she has been moving her arms around a lot and just kicking her little legs. And I really think that she is becoming a little bit more coordinated. Her movements are becoming more intentional instead of involuntary. So that is a really cool thing to see as a mom. I can physically see her developing and it is just so neat. She has become really great at tracking things with her eyes. She'll follow movements and sounds even better than before. And she recognizes faces now. So the moment that I peek over her in her bassinet first thing in the morning, she just looks up at me and just gives me the biggest smile. It is the sweetest thing. She recognizes daddy's face. And then she has also started to recognize her grandparents' faces. So she's really been studying our faces a lot recently. She's been looking more at our eyebrows. She loves when I raise my eyebrows like this. She thinks it's the funniest thing ever <laughs> and she giggles a lot. She hasn't laughed a real big like real laugh 
I guess, quite yet, but she giggles all the time. But she does love watching my eyebrows move. She likes looking at our lips and just kind of studying the darker parts where it's contrasting around our face. She has been making so many more noises coos and giggles and it sounds like she's talking. If you guys watched our Mother's Day vlog, I'm sure you saw that she and Chaz were having kind of a conversation, if you will, and she has been doing that so much lately. I keep telling her to say, mom, 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 <laughs> but of course, we're not quite there yet. I'm sure her first word will be something like chief. I'm sure it won't be mama or dada. It will probably be chief because chief barks at everyone that walks by and we're always saying chief, chief. It's okay, chief. So I'm sure her first word will be chief. <laughs> like I mentioned before, she is a very content baby. I can set her down in her swing or her bouncer and she will just stay there and look around and suck on her hands and she is just the happiest baby. She'll make noises to herself and sometimes she'll have really loud outbursts where it's just like, ah, and she's not frustrated or fussy she's just kind of learning how to use her vocal cords and that is the coolest thing it makes me smile every time and she has definitely been smiling so so much that is one of my favorite things to see so her eyes are still a gray blue and her hair is still very dark it is growing i can't believe her hair is getting so long already it's definitely started to curl up in the back and it's really hard to tame because she's definitely going to have some curls in her hair I can see that it's not going to be like ringlet curly, I don't think, but she's definitely going to have some waves and some curls in her hair because I cannot get her hair to lay flat no matter what I do. <laughs> so I can't wait for it to get longer because I think it's just going to be so beautiful. She has been getting better at tummy time, but she really doesn't like tummy time whatsoever. I still put her on her tummy a lot during the day because I know that she needs it, but she doesn't like it. So... It is what it is. I know we have to do it, and it definitely is helping her get stronger, but she's definitely not a fan either. She'll usually be okay for a few minutes, and then all of a sudden she just starts crying, and she wants me to pick her up. All right, so we're gonna move on to her sleeping patterns. So she has been sleeping, like I said, through the night since she was nine weeks old. I have no idea what we did to deserve that, but let me just say I will take it. It has been amazing. Now I do want to say that there are some nights that she still doesn't sleep through the night, and I don't think it's necessarily because she's hungry like it was before. It's because she has had some gas. So we've started giving her some probiotic colic and gas drops right before bed, and that has definitely seemed to help. She is sleeping between nine to ten hours each night, so it is so so nice to be able to get that much rest as parents and then be able to wake up fresh faced with more energy and start our day without being so sleep deprived. Now by about one month old she was already starting to sleep about six to seven hours a night with one to two feedings. When she does happen to wake up it's usually about three or four in the morning. I feed her really quick, change her diaper if it needs changing, and then we lay her right back down and she'll go right back to sleep. Now, if only she slept as good during nap time as she does during the nighttime, but if I had to pick, I would choose her to sleep better at nighttime because that way both Chaz and I can sleep through the night as well, which makes such a huge difference. We are still working on her naps, like I mentioned. What I've been doing recently is I've been starting to put her down in her crib more to nap. She was kind of napping all over the house a little bit more, like in her daca tot, in her bassinet, in her crib. There wasn't any consistency there. And so in order to kind of help her make it seem like, okay, when you're in this room and when it's dark and when you hear your white noise machine, it's time to sleep. It's time to take a nap. I've been trying to do that with her more consistently. So what I've been doing is I come in her room, I close the blinds, I shut the curtains, I turn on the white noise machine, and I kind of sing to her and rock, chief. <laughs> and I kind of sing to her and rock her, chief's dreaming, by the way. <laughs> stopped. <laughs> but I sing to her and rock her in here while the white noise machine is going. That way it signals to her that, okay, now it's time to rest. So that has seemed to be working. But again, when she's asleep, she doesn't really sleep very long. So by the time I lay her down and go to the bathroom, I just have a little bit of time to have to myself and then she's up again. Now when she wakes up, it does help that she doesn't cry right away. So she just kind of looks around and makes some cooing or grunting noises. And what I've been doing is I've just been leaving her in here and watching her on the 
the monitor. We recently just got a baby monitor because I wanted her to start napping in here more often. So I've just been keeping an eye on her on the monitor. And then of course, once she gets fussy, I'll come in. I try to put her back to sleep. And then of course, if she really starts crying, then I come in and if she's not falling back asleep, if she's wide awake, then I do go ahead and pick her up. So again, we have no problem getting her to sleep at nighttime. It's during the day that is the challenge. So if you guys have any additional suggestions or tips and tricks that worked for you or your little ones, I would love to know down in the comments below because again, we're trying to set it up like it is nighttime because that does work so well for her. We are swaddling her for naps as well just to see if that will work. And honestly, it's not making a difference during the day. But again, if you have any other tips and tricks or suggestions, I would love, love, love to hear them. We are trying to get her used to sleeping in her crib so that when we transition her to her crib from her bassinet, it makes for a very smooth transition. She does still love to be held. She loves to be worn. And occasionally I will do that so that she can get a little bit more rest but we really try not to do that because we want her to be used to sleeping on her own and not having to be held or worn. We are still using the Snooza Hero with her which is the little breathing monitor alarm system that we just clip onto her diaper. It doesn't phase her one bit and it gives both Chaz and I peace of mind so we love that thing. It is linked in my Amazon store if you are interested. It's a lot more affordable than some of the other breathing or movement monitors that are out there so what we've been doing is we are using that and then when she's in here I've been monitoring her with the baby monitor like I said and it has the sound on so if the alarm ever went off I would be able to hear it through the monitor even though I'm all the way on the other side of the house if that makes sense overall sleeping is going really well except for the fact that she doesn't take long enough naps. So we are still working on that. So I wanted to quickly talk about diapering. Eliana loves diaper changes. I have had a few questions about whether or not we use a wipe warmer, and so I'm just gonna put it in here. We do not have a wipe warmer, and the reason that I chose not to get one is because I didn't want my baby to be used to warm wipes, and then say we're out and about at Target, or I have to change her in the car, or she's at grandma's house and grandma has to change her. If she's used to those warm wipes and then all of a sudden she has this really cold wipe on her, that would be a shock and she probably would scream. <laughs> we have used just regular old wipes from the beginning and she has no problem with it. Also, she is now in size one diapers, so she probably could squeeze into newborn diapers if we really wanted her to, but we have now been through all of our newborn diapers, and we have just started using the size one with her. They are still a little bit big on her, so we've been folding the top down, which is what we do to put the snooza on her anyway when she's sleeping, but she is in size one diapers. She hasn't had any diaper rash since she was about two weeks old. She had it once, and it wasn't even really a rash, I guess. It was just a little bit raw. If you saw my one month update, I talked a little bit about that, but luckily she hasn't had anything since then. And then something new that we learned as first time parents is that breastfed babies don't poop every day, which was shocking. So I thought babies pooped like all the time, like three to four poopy diapers a day. I guess it started a few weeks ago and there were a few days where she didn't poo for the whole day and it was like two or three days in a row. And so she was still having a lot of wet diapers, but she wasn't having any dirty diapers. So Chaz and I started to become concerned and we asked her pediatrician and her doctor said that that was completely normal for breastfed babies, that sometimes they can go up to a week without having a dirty diaper. So that just seemed really odd to me, but she said as long as she's having enough wet diapers, then and that is totally normal. She's not acting like she's constipated. She's not getting fussy. She does have a little bit of gas occasionally. So we're just trying to continue to squeeze those out. She said if she is passing gas, then that means everything is open, so she's not constipated. It just is normal for breastfed babies. So that is everything I have for Eliana's two month update. I can't believe she'll be three months here in just a couple of weeks, and then she will be officially out of that newborn stage, which is so, so bittersweet. So I will definitely keep you guys updated. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in our next video. Bye.